Hello and welcome back to our SL. So today I'm going to talk about optics. So it's basically uh, I'm going to compare or I'm going to share my own experience of using two different systems. So one is the red dot, one is the low power variable optics. So I'm not going to compare the two specific models. So I'm not going to go over the the clarity of the lens and etc. So what I have here is the Aimpoint T2 and the Steiner P4XI, and they're both within about the same price range uh, without the mount. So I think it's a good comparison of the, of the two system. So I'm going to go over the pros and cons on this system and then you guys can decide which one you want to use for airsoft. So I've talked about the price range and now let's talk about the one of the main differences between the two is the weight. So on a typical red dot, it will weigh around 100-ish grams. So for a typical 1 to 4 power scope, it will weigh around 17 ounces and 1 to 6 is about 20 ounces on average. So with the mount and with the mount on both system, the low power fiber optics will weigh about 460 grams heavier than the radar setup. So that weight is about having a GBBR magazine on your gun. So for 1x, usually people say the radar is faster. So I did a few comparison with myself and my other two friends and then see if you can get a baseline for the timing. So at first I was just picking up the target and shoot, shooting five eight targets side by side but then I found that once you're on target, moving from target to target is about the same for the two system. The only thing that is a bit different is when I'm picking up the gun when I aim, the red dot does not have the does not have the black ring around the lens, unlike the P4XI. So you can see in the P4, you have to be really at the center in order to have a clear picture. So a little bit of movement left and right, up and down, you will see this black wing going all around. So with that, we're trying on a ready position and then just to get the gun in target and shoot and time ourselves between me and my two friends. And after five shot on each system, the T2 is faster for both me and my friend number two. We are about 0.1 seconds faster. And for my friend one, he has up and down between the two systems. So let's call it a draw for my friend one then. So in airsoft, in a typical gaming scenario, the radar has the advantage when you're going on the corner that I found. And by the way, I have used this for a year and a half and I've used the P4 for about seven to, seven to eight months. And both of them, I have like at least Oh, I've game with this way more, but then the P4, I think I have played 3 to 4 games CQB and 3 to 4 games outdoor with the, uh, with the P4. So in the CQB scenario, when I'm picking at the corner, if I'm not on my scope at the dead center, I will see the black ring as I mentioned. So you have a harder time picking the corner with the P4 than the T2. So besides that, I think if you're running, if you're like looking around, it's pretty much the same with the P4 and the T2. So it's only when you you have the corner shot when you're, or when you're turning that you have a more difficult time with the P4. But that comes in training, which I don't, so it might happen to you, it might not. As for magnification, you know, a typical red dot I've seen in like tactical riflemen, they have shot the red dot to like target this like three, four hundred yards. But in airsoft, I mean, your typical mass range would be within a hundred yards for sure. So the magnification is not really for seeing the target. In my case, um, in air or in airsoft, I think the four times is useful when you're looking at your BB path because the BB does not go in a straight line; it affects by wind. And for my naked eye, I can only see the BB like under 30 meters. Past 30 meters, you can't really see, I can't really see where my BB is going. So with the four times, I can see the BB traveling at like. 50 to 60 meters distant, so I can adjust my gun and the shooting accordingly to get the the player from the other side. It's like in this clip, you can see my GoPro recording at 1x and my zoom cam recording at 5x at the upper right corner. You can pretty much see the BB path going over to the other guy very clearly compared to the 1x on the GoPro. And the second good thing is that most of you have some kind of crossfire on your LVPO, and when you're when I'm bringing up my weapon, I can see whether I'm going straight or if I'm tilted on left or right. And because we're hop up, at first when I use the B4, when I brought up the gun, I noticed my gun is a little bit tilted to the left. 
and so when you shoot the BBs, so at 40 50 meters, your BB will start to shoot left. So that is a good like indication or training for me to like bring my cup, bring my gun up straight from later on. And the third advantage that I found is that I can use it to like seek enemy that's hiding between gaps. So in Hong Kong, we're playing, you know, let's say you have two barrels and you have a gap in between. So the player hiding between the barrels cannot shoot outward, but the players outside the barrel can shoot in the barrel. So in all these tiny gaps, as you can see in the video, it really helps me to find like players that are hiding between the gaps. So I would know someone is there, I can tell my teammates that someone is there, or I can try to make a shot at the gap to try to get a player. So those are the three main advantages that I found in the airsoft by using the magnification optics. Well, you can say you can get a red dot and with a like three times scope behind, but then if you do that, the total weights will be the same as the LVPO. And also, the eye relief and next pupil is not as great for the 3x. I have had the G33 with the T2 combo before, but the eye box and eye relief is, is a lot worse than the P4. I would rather get the P4 at the 4x than looking at that. And also, it doesn't have a crosshair, so you might, you might not know if you are holding your gun properly. So, with that said, if you are proper training, if you are training to bring up your gun straight all the time, you won't need the crosshair. And you you can find a place that you can tune your gun at like 50, 60 meters. That is going straight, and I mean your red dot is really true to like 50, 60 meters zero. Then the red dot is perfect. And the only downside is that you can't really see the enemy they're hiding in the gap. So that's my own thoughts of the red dot and the low powerful variable optics on airsoft. So please leave comments if you want to say anything, or please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you find this useful. And I will see you guys next time.